Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about improving the electrics and the electronics on Renko and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. This week was a very varied week, so there isn't a particularly clear theme for this video. It's very windy, as you can probably see for yourself now. Uh, but what I started with was improving the wheelhouse electronics based on things I learnt from our search for the Anko last week. So let's pick up there. First job this morning is just to block the computer mount out from the wall a little bit. I got a block of timber that I pre-drilled and I'm just putting it in as a spacer. The reason for this job is that all the sockets are on the back of this computer and depending on the size of the plug, there's actually no room for it to go in the socket. They come out at a bit of an angle and they end up hitting the wall here. So I just need the gap. The bulky connector that broke the bank and made me do this mod is this HDMI lead, which is gonna to go to a little screen in front of the wheel. Now the computer is spaced off from the wall, I can get the HDMI lead in. And that lets me have this little screen up here. Hopefully you can see as a mirror. So running OpenCPN at the moment as a mirror of the main computer screen. This screen was quite a simple install, just two screws through the base. I can disconnect it very quickly and bring it down if I wanted to, but uh, I'll probably leave it most of the time. What's also very cool about it is this wire here just goes to a little transformer, but it's actually 12 volt. So I'm gonna cut the transformer off the end of these wires, run the wires, down here with the GPS aerial and then just have it go straight to 12 volt and get rid of this transformer altogether. The idea there is it'll make it a bit easier to drive the tracks I need to do to do a proper sonar search. Next little upgrade I'm gonna do is on the side scan sonar screen, which looks funny because we're not moving. Go down, go to settings, then we can go to page settings and you can edit data overlays add a data overlay. So I am going to do a GPS position, one line I think, a little bit in the way, but I think the nice thing about this is when I've got a recording and I see something on the sonar on the recording, even if it's back home, I'll know where it was. Previously I didn't. Let's also have a little look at, uh, let's go course over ground. Maybe what I will do is do add GPS two lines. Is that better? Uh, add uh, four overlays. So, uh, oh, you can move them. Excellent. All right. So let's let's delete that one. Yep. Let's put that. Where do we want it? Center's kind of good. Maybe this one put up here. We'll, we'll try. We can always move it, but that data will be saved in the recording now. The way I record this, as you can probably tell, is just mirror it to my phone using the Raymarine app and then just do a screen record on the phone. It's the easiest way for me to get a recording currently. All right, so already we've got a few improvements over the last attempt. All right, let's go for a search, see what we find this time. get closer, maybe this screen's better. You can see here now I can just point between those two tracks we did, split the difference and run in the middle. But it's nice having the screen in front of me. These are the tracks from the sonar scanning. Mostly did east to west, but a few north to south loops as well. As you can probably see from even that short section of the scan, there's a few prospective targets out in the mudflats beyond the reef. I'm thinking the anchor's probably there, 
and then the chain got dragged into the reef where it got wrapped around a rock. One of those targets, it's quite obvious, is actually a mooring out there, but there's others beyond that that are unknown, so they're definitely worth investigating. I'll save the rest of the scan and all that kind of stuff though for the next time Paul and I go for a dive and hopefully get this anchor to the surface. In last week's vid, a couple of comments came up several times with regards to finding this lost anchor. And one of them was about putting a floating buoy on the chain before it got cut. Obviously, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Had nothing rigged up at the time. It was all just very sort of spur at the moment. What I will do now though, is prepare a buoy for that situation in the future, because if I cut it short, it'll be six meters below the waterline and not get fouled on props or keels or anything like that. And from what I can tell with the sonar, the density differential, so having like a buoy in water means it should actually show up pretty well. <clears throat> All right, splice this one up pretty short now. Enough to get it up out of the mud and the weed and whatever, but not so tall that it's gonna, you know, risk fouling a prop or anything. So we'll just quickly mouse this shackle and then we'll keep this ready to go. I probably wouldn't leave a sprung loaded carabiner for eight months, but certainly these days, now the boat's up and running, we'd be going back within a week or so to go and find whatever it is. I've been kidnapped by uh, pedals. Eddie's back on the beach. All Ed does all day is play on the beach. Oh, here's Luna, they can hang out together. Play buddies. Here comes Arnie. So I'm just wiring this up quickly before I get totally distracted. This is a multi-core going down the wheelhouse, so I'm gonna use two more cores from here. Anyway, now we'll just put this to permanent 24 volt power, given the switches on the lights themselves, and we should be in business. Okay, lights are working now, individually switched. They actually give an amazing amount of light out, so I'll film those next time on the boat in the dark. Being viciously attacked by a dog. Hello, Luna, how are you? Arnie, how are you? Oh. A little bit dusty. Hello, Luna. Hello, Eddie. Oh, thanks, mate. Would you like one? Okay. <laughs> so here I am. I'm still here. Even though you're not my dog, which is why you're not in that many videos. Battle Royale. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, the uh, E-Tech on the back of Dave's punt died again, and uh, we decided just to take it off and find another outboard that he could use just to get to work in the meantime while we get it fixed up. Right off somewhere. So you're gonna gurney this now, aren't you? That's the plan. That's pathetic, Luna. All right, let's do some more work. What I'm gonna do now, might seem a little bit random, is try and get this sink out. I wanna run this 240 volt cable down through here, and I'm gonna make a plate that goes in here. That plate can have a small hole for the cable, which means you can drop the plug through, and then put the plate with the cable going through the hole. So, I don't want the sink here anyway, I'm gonna put a sink out the back, all the wet stuff, you know, fishing, washing up, all that sort of stuff can happen outside. It's a fair weather boat, it's all there is to it. And this will give me more storage under here and a bigger bench top I can use here. So let's figure out how all these taps and whether this is glued in or not and pull it all apart. You can see here, this uh, sink's been disconnected for a while anyway it's never been usable for water like that and this is right in the middle of where you're storing stuff thinking I might convert this to drawers make the space more efficient but in the meantime let's get all these hoses and this kind of thing so it looks like this hose clamps up there so I'll go grab a screwdriver this tap unwound the center section which is great this one's still got it here but I'll punch it through I would use a drift for this but we'll use a screwdriver because it annoys people more Unscrewed the sink, then I think we can unscrew this pipe. And we're getting close. Ah, well done. 
There we go, nice. Uh, that's good, that's much better. I cut the heads of these bolts off because I couldn't hold the nut and turn at the same time. And they've all hung in there, so I'll grab them before they drop down and rattle for the rest of the life. Got one. Yes, got all four. We're in luck. few other little jobs while I've got power. I'm gonna cut this rod so when I put the cover here I don't have to drill a hole for this. I think this was a really bad design so I'm just gonna cut it off so we can put the new ceiling in. Last little job is these bits of aluminium are going to become edges on the lazarette floor to stop things sliding off when we're at sea. That afternoon, Dave, Eddie and I headed over to Brooklyn to grab an outboard that Howley kindly offered for him to borrow. I think the wind's gonna do the tie up for us. Sorry, mate. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, pedals, wasn't paying very much attention. No, that's all right. I think the wind did We're it for on. us. We're on, yeah, nice work. Where the sink was, these where the two taps were, I'm going to drill this one out a little bit bigger because I'm going to install this ScanStrut uh, waterproof USB socket. It's actually two, two sockets and it's sort of grommeted and everything. I'll show you once it's in. But I'm going to have this on the outside of the wheelhouse here. So if you're sitting outside at a table that's going to be here, you've got a little bit of power. Pretty straightforward install. So it looks like we got some sort of adhesive grommet. From the hole here, I'm guessing there's a center screw to give it extra support. The way this opens, you press the unlock and then the whole thing lifts up. So yeah, we've got a screw here we might use. You've then got two soft rubber grommets here. So when you put the plugs in the USB ports that sensibly point straight down, then it just gets sealed all around the edge and around your cables with the rubber grommets and then locks shut. On the back here, just got to thread this collar now. Okay, there we go. Unlock. Waterproof. Now, Inside, simple spay connectors. I'll put it in parallel with our 12 volt sockets here. It can be on that circuit. I think that's fine. Won't bore you with the details. It's just a few more crimps, a few more wires. For a little break from working on the boat and a bit of change of scene, uh, a friend Lorenzo and I went up to the wreck of the Parramatta in his boat. The Parramatta is the sister ship to the Swan that's sunk quite close to the island that we'll be doing a video on soon. So it was a good chance to sort of get a sense of the scale of the boat and know what to expect when we go on that dive. Shall we attempt to raft up to it? I reckon we should give it a shot if you're happy. Yeah, I'm cool, man. Danger's my middle name, remember? That's it. Okay. Um, we you also want to determine the best way to actually walk amongst it. So That's what I'm thinking, over yeah. Here it's a bit more exposed. It, it looks is. like the old Coliseum. Ah, uh, yeah, it's just the section falling down, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Not as rampy as it looked. Okay, so we've got a pole there. That's going to be Yeah, that pole could be handy, eh? Mud, but we're on a rising tide, so yeah. cool. <laughs> this beam still looks alright. Reminds me of the wreck we walked on at the Guanos Canal. Only, only that was three in the morning, this is three in the afternoon. 
here and then This bit's a bit wobbly. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Graceful. <laughs> Friday now, uh, getting close to trying to wrap this week and this video up. Today's job is to run a 240 volt cable from the sink area here, essentially connecting to our power board, down to the lazarette where the inverter is. First job, let's clean all this stuff out, this random collection of tea, coffee and whatever. Uh, bottom one here is really just cleaning stuff at the moment, believe it or not. Spring winds are here for sure. I think we got these for another week or so yet. Bit of a pain, but at least we got indoor jobs today. Somehow I managed to lose most of the footage for it, but this orange conduit here that I added runs all the way up to the other bulkhead with two cable glands is what the three core 240 volt power cable is going to be running through. All right, yellow cables through. Here's the wire, you probably can't see, a little wire coming through from the orange conduit we put through earlier. So I'll attach this to the cable, then we'll pull it through into the lazarette. All right, let's crack the cover off the Victron. Up under here, cable comes in, presumably through this little clamp, and we have LNPE, so Live Neutral Protective Earth. Now they're in, let's give it a little bit of slack and then put this cable retainer back on. It's only plastic, so I don't want to over tighten it. That seems good enough. Now, here we've got our earth which I'm going to run to one of the bolts on the gearbox, which is now metal on metal to the prop shaft. I'm going to run my earth through the middle here. Seems like good a good spot as any. So let's drill this and put another grommet in. It's just a anti-corrosive etch primer for steel. Bit messy but we're going to paint all here eventually anyway. It's just a little rubber collar that goes in here. And in and then this just squeezes it all down. Thinking we'll attach it to like one of the bolts on this side, gearbox bolts. We're just metal on metal on metal on metal through to the prop shaft. So it should be good earth. Gonna put this and then the washer on the bottom just in case it seals oil at all. No, it doesn't, it's a spring washer. So let's put this on the bottom, spring washer. So it just goes into the casing. You probably got a better view of that than I do. Now, because we previously had an ungrounded inverter here, um, we've got positive and negative, so that's nice and easy. Let's just switch the 24 volt house bank off. All right, whack the positive on first. All right, there we go. Three core for the 240 volt, positive negative for the house bank and our earth. I should probably leave the Thunderbirds goggles on when I flip the switch, shouldn't I? All right, here we go. Everything right, I think so. Mm. What do we got? Inverter, alarm and eco went off, that's a good sign. Happy days, no smoke. The final setup now is we have our 24 volt starting bank 
our alternator connects to there, as does the solar setup. The solar controller is another Victron, the MPPT 1030, so there's 100 volts, 30 amps, which is enough for the array we've got. Then, when the starting bank is charging, the VSR will connect it to our house bank to charge the house bank as well. Then the house bank feeds into the Red Arc BCDC 1250D, and this does the conversion from 24 to 12 to charge a 12 volt house bank. This also has a direct input for a solar cell, which I may add just to give ourselves a little bit of redundancy and a little bit of extra solar. But that's fundamentally our electrical system for now. Okay, this is the little 12 volt inverter that Leon gave me. Thank you, Leon. I'm gonna keep that on board because not only has it got us out of trouble, it'll be an awesome backup. So it gave us two 240 volt sockets and two USB ports, so pretty cool. I'm not a big fan of cigarette light sockets, which is why it took me a long time to get around to installing this. Leon was always like, oh, just install a cigarette lighter socket and use the inverter. Now that I have, I've got cigarette light sockets everywhere and I'm actually pleased to do. They're not technically a great connector, but they're so ubiquitous that you want something and you're like, bang, there you go, plug it in use a 12 volt appliance designed for camping or whatever. Because of that, I'm really happy I've got these two permanent cigarette lighter socket ports now. They've been a, you know, I should have done it earlier. You were right, Leon. All right, moment of truth. Let's fire up the computer on the new inverter. Oh, got a power light, that's a good start. See how it goes. There we go, happy days. Got this cable neatened up a little bit too. Then we're gonna make the little access hole here and the fitted cutting board that goes in here. Well, thanks for watching. I'm really happy with the improvements that got made to the boat this week, so that's nice. Uh, I'm also feeling a lot more confident that we've got a better chance of finding this anchor next time we go for a dive, so I'm looking forward to that too. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you soon. See ya. What's up, Daffy? Where are you? I can hear you complaining. Oh, you're not over the fence, are you? She's figured out how to get out, <laughs> but you haven't figured out how to get back in, have you? Where's Daisy? Oh, really? You have to stay in. Now, what have you learnt from all that? D-Squad's found a new space under the house for a dust bath. <laughs> You're very happy when you get in there, aren't you? Have a wriggle around. <laughs> nice dusty spot.